Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, our topic for discussion is signal representation. There are several ways to express a signal. For example, we can have an equation to represent a signal. We also can have a time domain to represent a signal. In fact, time domain is one of the most popular way to represent a signal. Next, we can also have a frequency domain to represent a signal. You probably will ask, why bother to have frequency domain since we already have a time domain? So I'm going to explain to you when we are going to use a frequency domain to describe a use case. And last but not least, a constellation diagram. Constellation diagram is extremely useful to represent a digital signal. So today I'm going to show it to you how we can use constellation diagram to represent a digital signal. So this is what I have mentioned to you. Any signal, okay, they can be represented by this equation here. Okay, there are four parameters. Okay, the DC parameters, the peak voltage, the frequency, and the phase. So these are the four main characters to represent a signal okay, with an equation. So if you want, okay, you can take a look on my previous video. For example, when we vary the amplitude according to the baseband, we call this amplitude shift key for the digital baseband. And when we modify the frequency according to the baseband, okay, again, we call this as FSK, frequency shift key. Last but not least, if we alter the phase according to the baseband, we call this PSK, phase shift key in. So like what I have mentioned earlier on, this time domain okay, to express signal is one of the most popular way that we use to describe a signal. Over here in time domain, you can see that they actually describe how does the signal actually change according to time. For example, this is a sine wave. Okay, you can see that the signal actually increase with time and after that they start to decrease with time. So with this diagram, you can see how does the signal change with time. Like what I have mentioned early on, there are four types of key parameters, the DC parameters, the peak voltage, the amplitude, and the phase. Typically, we use an oscillator scope to see this signal. So basically, oscillator scope measure time versus voltage, ampere, or power. So this is how we describe a signal in time domain. Next, okay, we talk about frequency domain. Okay, like what I mentioned, you will ask why we need to have frequency domain. Okay, for example, now you are tasked to measure how much device is actually transmitting in a room, for example. So you are asked by your boss to okay, quantify what frequency is used in a particular room to establish communication. So you use a spectrum analyzer, for example, here to measure the power versus the frequency as you see over here. So from this diagram here, you can see that there are four main users okay, in this room. Okay, one of them, the first user actually transmit at 900 megahertz. Probably this is a 3G signal. Next, another user transmit at 1.8 gigahertz. Probably this is a LTE signal. You also probably see this 2.4 gigahertz, okay, a, a Bluetooth user. And last but not least, a 5.8 gigahertz probably is a Wi-Fi user. So what happened here is with frequency domain, you can easily see how many users are using at what frequency, for example, for this particular case. So therefore, it is very useful to describe a signal in a frequency domain. At one glance, okay, you will be able to count how many users are using at what frequency in this particular location, for example. So this is when we use the frequency domain. Next, okay, so we are very used to see signal expressed either in time or frequency domain. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, this constellation diagram is a very popular way to quantify a digital modulation, for example, here. Okay, so I'm going to describe in more detail on this constellation diagram. Okay, but for today's video, okay, I just give you some greens. What is constellation diagram? 
on the next video, okay, I'll give you a more detailed description of constellation diagram. Okay, over today, I'm going to show you a simple BPSK, five phase shift key in, as an example for this constellation diagram. Okay, in short, constellation diagram also have two different names. They also call as IQ diagram or the vector diagram. They mean the same thing. So basically, they look like this here. So basically, with an I and Q. And then they can be expressed in a mathematical expression as described over here. So let's go in some detail okay, on this constellation diagram okay, for a BPSK. Okay, for example, here, when the digital data is a zero, okay, I will use this equation to represent it. So basically, they have a phase shift of zero and a magnitude of five. Basically, I can represent the signal zero as a green dot over here. They have a magnitude of five over here, as you can see from this equation, and a phase shift of zero. Okay, so basically, this green color dot used to identify when the data is actually zero. Next, when the data is one, what happened here is basically I can use this blue color dot to represent. Okay, from this equation here, you can see that the amplitude is five and the phase shift is 180 degree. So from here, you can see that the magnitude is five and the phase shift is 180 degree. So when you see this blue color dot, okay, it actually indicates that the data is actually a one here. So like what I mentioned to you earlier on, okay, why constellation diagram is very useful for digital data. For example, over here, if you see the dot actually appeared here, it indicates a data zero. When you see a data over here, which is in blue, it actually indicates a data that is one. So in short, you just look at the location of the dot, you were actually able to so-called write down whether is it a one or zero on a piece of paper with a pen. Okay, for example, now you sit down here, you just take a look on this constellation diagram, you see which particular location they appeared, and you actually write down the digital data. Let me give you an example with this baseband signal of 1001 here. So for example, when the data actually appeared over here, okay, you actually know that it's a digital data one. So you can come up with this digital one here. So next at the next time interval, okay, the data actually switched to this in green here at this particular location. And I'm aware that this is a signal zero. And again, I can write down this as a zero. Next, the signal still appeared over here. So I know that it's a zero. And therefore, I can write down one more zero over here. And last but not least, it appeared on the left this time round. And I know that the signal one is actually sent up by the transmitter. And I actually can come up this number, this way from here. So this is how we can use the constellation diagram to describe the digital signal. In short, okay, it will be much more easier to identify whether is it a message one or zero. With this, I'd like to end my video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.